Sunday at noon on WHPC. Take the Long Island Expressway to the Meadowbrook Parkway and look for the sign saying no parking on the expressway and no express service on the parkway. Go ride on Highway 24 to Garden City. $2 all-day parking includes pit pass. Such as multiple voice harmony. Cause they don't re record like Les Paul, Mary Ford, Patty Page, Tony Martin, and me. For oh, I am a tree. Or me, or you, or he, or the, or they, or anybody. You've uh, tuned into the eclectic Motormouth Radio Show <laughs> on WHPC today with your hosts, Ray Guarino, Chris Switzer, and a little help from Spike Jones. So Rob was not lying when he said that you were going to open the show with Spike Jones. <laughs> wow, I said, Rob, look at the, here's my open, here's my seat. Wow. Yeah, I, um, I tell you the truth. I'll tell you the, the God's honest truth, total disclosure on the show. The song I wanted to open with was Hey Gumbada. Oh, okay. Which is not Spike Jones. Not Spike Jones. Done by a lot of guys. I have it on my phone. I've played it 9,000 times this week. I love that song. Right. And I know I have it recorded somewhere, yet I couldn't find it. So in a flurry of activity last night, just, you know, I'm like, oh, crap, I didn't find music for the show. Let me look oh through. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and I'm looking through my CD collection, and I and I found this. I said, that, that'll be good. Okay. Yeah, that, that works. We can work can you play You Only Hurt the One You Love? Uh, Is it on there? Oh, well, let me see here. There are, uh, wow, we got 22 tracks on here. Uh, it's got to be on there. The Blues Double, yeah, Great Big Show. No, Five Foot Two, Eyes of Blue. Jones Polka, I Wubba Wabbit, that's on here. The Gazoo <laughs> I Polka is on here. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not on here. Yet wow. On here. That was alto, uh, alto, baritone, and bass. So just just so you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good to good to know what the song was he just played. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll have another one later on. So. Good DJ technique there, right? I like it. I know. <laughs> so Motormouth Radio, Long Island's only automotive talk show here. Give us a call, 516-572-7440. You didn't call us last week when we had um uh Evan on. Evan uh from from uh Yeah, Evan, which, which was a great show. It, yeah. I, what uh, what was the the polishing? Wait a minute, hold on. I have it on my because I have my my stuff right here. Oh, do you? Uh, Evans detailing and polishing, right? Evan Steiger, Steiger. Yes, right. it was a good show. Right, right. Very informative. I could still be talking to him if we were on even now. I did get uh, some more products from him this week. I had a I had a big order, and one of the things I ordered was his the the glass. Um, I forget exactly what they call it. It's it's a glass coat. It actually fills in. We don't realize, but our, our windshields and side glass, especially as they get older, like on my car, right. the the glass gets porous, little little chips and things that you don't even see. Sure. Now, when it gets so bad, like if you drive on the LIE, my you know our friend Kilowatt Kevin used to drive on the LIE every day, and just from sand and rock, even just little sand things, you don't even hear hitting your windshield. It'll pepper it, and then when you drive at night. And and the light hits it, especially if there's rain, you'll see like a Fresnel pattern where you're like, oh, I, I can't see. Mm -hmm. And if you especially if you're going through Fresno, you exactly. get the Fresnel pattern. In Fresno. Without a doubt. Yeah. And your uh, your insurance company does cover that. They will cover a windshield just because it's gotten worn because it's a safety item. Safety issue. Sure. Insurance so companies coating, love that. 
Yeah. So the 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 coating that Evan has is a uh, it, it just kind of fills in those micro scratches and and nicks and chips and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I'm anxious to use it on my car. But I just I just noticed something today. You know, we had gotten a new built a new table. Had a, a I commissioned a carpenter to build me a big table. What was it? Forty two by forty two inch square table for the kitchen. Okay. And my good friend Ricky. Uh, made me a piece of, of tempered glass to put on top of it to kind of, so it's, you know, for protecting. Sure. Just noticed today when I was looking through the room, I saw like some fingerprints and marks on the glass. I'm like, you know, you clean it, but they come back. I'm going to try this glass coat on that and see if it'll ha actually help repel just the normal things that get stuck on there from, you know, from your Right. Whatnot. So you're going to put a fork on the table. It's going to go shooting right off. <laughs> put your coffee cup there. Pew! God, where did the coffee cup go? Holy moly. It could happen. It uh -huh. could happen. So. You can also get us on a text if you like. Uh, this is for Brian. I think Brian has already written it down. 203-670-4127 will get you to text us. There we go. Because technology goes that way. Right. Uh, as well. And you can also follow us on social media. It's Motormouth Radio on Twitter or X. And uh, Facebook and the web. The web is behind. We're way behind on the website. We have, no, it's not dead. People have asked me, "Hey, what what do you do? You guys are not no. The it's just, no, it's just not placeholder. We haven't yeah. <laughs> and on Instagram, it's real underscore Motormouth Radio, where you'll find the latest and greatest of things that we've been involved in. I put some stuff mm -hmm. up this week. I've been doing some restoration work on my console for my Pontiac. Yes, I'm looking forward to seeing it. I haven't even, ah, guilty. I have not even been on the social media kick all week. And I can't even give you a reason why. I've just like turned around and went, where did this week go? It, it's been crazy. Yeah, I do that sometimes too. I just mm -hmm. kind of let a few days lapse. But what, what I tell you what did happen in the last few days. That is yes. monumental. I think I did feel the earth shake as it happened. And why <laughs> were you fully dressed? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was. Now I did, and I did what I always do on Thursday night. I did the plane and traffic show, and had a tell video. me how did it go? Had a special guest, and it was you. Me. So I'll see you if they go on YouTube and go to Motormouth Video. You can see the videos from our weekly radio show. I didn't even know I was there. How did I and do? You could also go to Plane and Traffic's website, uh, YouTube channel, and see, you know, Chris, who came in, and, and uh, Lewis had texted me in the afternoon. He was under the weather, and right. he needed me to carry the ball. No problem. Right. You do it well. Done it before, but I said, hey, you know what? Let me get somebody in, and, uh, you know, actually, you weren't my first choice. So... Uh, <laughs> Thank God. Yeah, I actually. You know, I was hoping there were a couple of people turned you down. Went you with Kenny, Kenny Wessel, who was supposed to be coming on the show, that show. Yeah, I figured maybe he's free. You know, that would be great. Kenny's a wealth of information. <laughs> I figured. You know what? I, I, it from doing this show, I learned I didn't want to let the guests feel they're un, like we forgot about them or they're unappreciated right. because then they're not going to be around when you want them. But no, he had a, uh, his grandson broke his arm. They were in the emergency room and all sorts of stuff. So I said, unlike co-hosts that always feel unappreciated. Right. So I uh, reached out to you and there you go. So, uh, yes. yeah. So now you got to see what it was like in the room with the boys. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm still twitching because of it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was a good show. It was good. Yeah. The time I was there it was good. <laughs> right. Yeah, you left. We stayed, of course, the same thing. We, um, you know, we we stayed on longer as as usual. We went to. Right. Well, we I figured I had to do what Lewis does, and I had a bail early. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Right. Let let the guys you know run amok, uh -huh. which is which is it's it is an interesting show when it does turn. <laughs> it's it's almost like when the cat's away. <laughs> Well, but, you know, the thing is, for the people who don't know, it's kind of like this show, but different. It really is. Well, yeah, it's like this show, but different. Yeah, you know, it's like a, a radio mm. show or a podcast, but it's with video. And yes. and everybody, instead of like here where we bring people in, uh, you know, and, and we're the mainstays, there's a cast of people who are there, which could right. change any week. Like Tyler was in. Uh, yeah. And then. You know, because because uh, uh, Terry was over at Tyler's place in Ohio, they were working on one of the builds that Terry is doing. So uh, you get to see the people, which is a little different than you know right. than you from, get 
I mean, the neck up. See it here. If, you, if you go to YouTube, you can see it. Right. And so you don't know if they're wearing any pants, but that's okay. You never know. Right. You never know. You know, it's just that's the way it is. It could, you know, enhance the personality. You never know. Right, right. So, oh. is uh, anything happened with the with the car this week? And the other oh one, God, I yes. Sent you a link to a car that was uh, right that Doug had sent me. It was a sixty eight. Was it or sixty yeah. seven? Sixty eight Chrysler Newport with the wood grain sides. It was a Newport convertible, which was which is very interesting. Those are very interesting cars to me, and and. Uh, but yeah, it's it was one of those things that was too much money, and I have not enough room, so right. Well, you it, know. it falls into that fast category. I must admit, I've been looking at vehicles recently, and I've been starting. This may be a little bit of an optimistic statement here, but I'm starting to see the prices come down. Okay, people. I don't know whether it's because of people are tightening their belts financially and they just can't afford that that classic car anymore. But I've been seeing prices on a lot of decent vehicles uh the prices have gone from astronomical to almost attainable oh, okay so it's it's an i think it's a a nice place to be if you're looking to buy something obviously if you're looking to sell something it's not that hot but but yeah it's uh it's now one you, of those things these are classic style cars you're saying or you're yeah not ready? okay classics so it's it's just some of those things that I like i'm always looking for big big convertibles that's always been something i gravitate to and i've been seeing that meteoric rise kind of curve a little bit people okay. are starting to become a little realistic that maybe they can't get that fifty thousand dollars for that that caddy convertible that they were longing for right. so it's it's kind of a nice it's a nice thing to see that that, that uh mm -hmm. There's a I mean, section of people that are coming down to reality. It can't be that there's more product on the market because, you know, once they stop right. making cars, they don't make them anymore. So it can't be that. It can't be supply and demand. Mm -hmm. uh, it must be that maybe people aren't ponying up the bucks that the, that the sellers are, are asking That's, because they watch the auctions on TV. Well, the, the, the auctions, I don't think, are a accurate portrayal of what well what moves the prices of, of – normal average vehicles okay. nowadays i mean you're looking at like the creme de la creme of, i agree of, with of half cars. your statement i don't okay. i don't agree i agree that it's not what what moves the whole market but it's what moves people and they say hey you know yes I, I, you know I, I well i saw a 69 charger you know go for eighty thousand. so my charger all right my, my right we'll go for 40. No, right know, which is like sitting in a lake somewhere cars yeah. like you know maybe a ten thousand dollar car but people i've heard it time and time again I saw it on the auction. This car sold for so much. So mine must be worth. Right. Know. So, yeah, I think it drives people in a, um, yeah, in a fantasy world kind of way. So mm -hmm. I just and saw guys that buy. There are guys that buy. They, they, they do. That. Oh yeah. Yeah. They're, they're just they're. I, I like to say in, in, in a nice way, I like to say they're insane enough to actually pick up a car like that, which is yeah. Fine. It's that's there's nothing wrong with that. I saw a '61 Chevy convertible uh, that was online this morning. It was there's a site I go to called BarnFinds.com, oh, sure. which is very sure. cool. Very I always enjoy them. I always get a good chuckle out of a lot of the stuff that they have available. And this car was. It said it was rusty. Uh -huh. It was a '61 Chevy. You could tell they pulled it out of a river somewhere. And I can't call it rusty. I could more or less call it gone. You were yeah. buying two thirds of a vehicle, maybe even one half of a vehicle, because there were there was no floor pan. All you saw, other than absolutely no vinyl top, just the framework. How but when you looked inside, there was a dashboard. That's a '62 Chevy. Yeah, Dougie knows what I'm showing you. These yeah, fresh it's out of the UV That's out nice. Of the UV. Here's That's a pretty. car. I that... see a V8 emblem on that fender. Yeah, it's an SS. Here is an SS sixty two that has um, a V eight. That's, that's pretty solid. It's it's a V eight. Now we were talking about whether it was a two eighty three or a three twenty seven. I'm thinking, I'm thinking two eighty three with a two bath. Yeah, but probably two eighty three. But the car is a factory air car. Ooh. It's got the it's got that blue and white uh, interior, beautiful seat yeah. interior, the blue tinted glass. Right. The owner early, early on converted it from a two speed automatic to a four speed. Okay. 
but I, I'm not a fan of a power glide, so I personally like that choice. Yeah, yes. so Doug was saying when he looked it over real quick, it, or real closely, it was done right. Like he, you know, you can see the con there's a console in it. It was done with factory parts, but he noticed that when he looked now at the firewall, like where the clutch rod comes through, all that was done right. It wasn't butchered or done with a hand grenade. Oh, so it's a four speed AC car. It's a four speed AC car Ooh. that was changed for better gears. And this car is now currently for sale. And Doug and I were both saying, there's a guy, Doug's going to list it. And there's a guy that I know who says he wanted the car, but he hasn't come to look at it yet. And now after seeing the pictures cleaned up, I told Doug yesterday, I said, I think I want it. And he says, yeah, you, you, but you got to get behind me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, you win. <laughs> what am I going to do? You win, brother. You win. You know what? It's. It is one of those things I, you know, that's you're going into like my side of the of the atmosphere here, my side. I love classic cars that are like gentleman vehicles that are cars that you can just get in and just just float. It's a it's a highway vehicle. You can have a conversation in the car. It's nice. It's it's just a, a nice place to be. Those are the cars that I like where it's not it's not an, an assault on the senses. Not that that's not a bad thing, but that shouldn't be the only thing. Sure. That's the way I look at it. So, yeah, that would be a great compliment to your GTO, which is, to me, an assault on the senses at times. <laughs> Could be. Well, you haven't been in it in a long time. It's, it's no, changed I have. a lot since you saw it last. And there's a video of the last time I was right. in it. Well, that was, yeah, that was when the car was the way it kind of I liked it. Rough yeah. and raw, primed. I had no interior in the car. I had two seats. Yeah. No door panels, no carpet, no nothing. It was great. It was great. Totally but different. Totally. Yeah. I mean, now it actually is more. It's a. It's nice to be in. You know, the interior is nice. Oh, I'm Did, sure it is. Thinking I'm about sure changing the carpet color, by the way. Why? Just Black. on. A, I'm just my my styling eye. I'm thinking, you know, because the interior in that car is GM. Do it all in black, like four. Yeah. So did everything in some pumpkin color or like green. Right. No. So black dash, black door panels, black carpet, black seat. No. So I'm thinking yeah. about. Uh, in those years, they had like a. They had a a light. Um, it's like a gold, they call it gold. It's like a gold colored carpet. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, sure. wait, throw that in there with the, you know, the gold of the car and literally all of the carpet you see, but because of the seats and the console and the floor mats is sections of it. You don't see the whole carpet. Right. Right. That might just make it pop a little bit more. Might make the interior just jump. It's out so of funny. It. Cause I just took the gold carpet out of the Chrysler and yeah. put a black one in. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Well, your car, the rest of your car is green. So, you know, yeah, well, the, I, I call it multi now. It's got it's got a green it's green car with a gold dash and white door panels and green seats. It's like I just it went to the buffet and ate too much and it exploded inside that car. <laughs> I'm just finding parts and just slapping them in there. It's like whatever. What color is? It? Who cares? Throw it in. I'm actually going to do the kick panels. Uh, under the dash, they're all scraped, scraped up. For some reason, one of them is is all scraped up, scraped up on the passenger side. It's not like it's damaged; just that the paint is flaking off it. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to shoot those black. I'm going to yeah. take care of those, so it kind of matches the rest of the interior because they're still gold. And I had left some guy, some some critic walks up to my car at the car show. He's like. Hey, look at those door panels. Look at those kick panels. They're all scratched up. I'm like, ah. yeah, thanks, pal. I said, you yeah. want to come on over to the house and, and buff yeah. them out for me? Right, like, right. I told him it's a work in progress. That's funny. So <laughs> while we're on the topic of cars and projects, yeah. you know, we talked about this before the show. My my big project this week is getting in a truck with two guys and we're driving 700-something miles to drag back a project car. Yeah, it's a drag back. You're cleaning out someone else's garage, like we discussed on Thursday. But yeah, this a 59 Brookwood wagon. What happened was the, the quick story is there was a, a gentleman who now is he's well into his 80s. Yeah, he, this isn't a quick story. Go ahead. He commissioned the build, and right. then a uh, to a guy who's done other builds for him that were top flight builds. Got so it. along the way, he decided, hey, you know what? I I want something now. I don't want to wait for this to be done. Uh, so, and told the guy, listen, I, you know, I hope you don't mind, but you know, are you interested in buying it from me? So he did. And now he listed it for sale and my friend, uh, found it and, and bought it right he flew out there in February. And that's when we looked at it and made the deal. He made the deal, left the money and said, okay, we'll come pick it up sometime. Well, now is sometime. Yeah. So, you know, the body was body worked and painted. It's all empty. There's nothing in it. Not a piece of wire, not a piece of cloth, nothing. Right. It's a shell. Uh, he put a C4 Corvette uh, uh, suspension into the chassis, and they were going to put an 06 GTO 
independent rear in the back of this car right. with an LS engine and automatic and all, which is all that. He got everything with the deal, got everything. So it's going to be a big model. It's going to be a big work in progress, and, and we'll see how that goes. But so the trip is we're driving out to, to load it up and bring it back this week. Mm -hmm. So for those who may watch or see me on Playing in Traffic, I won't be there next Thursday because I'll be <laughs> coming home be somewhere on the road. Right. Uh, I you plan on being in the here next Sunday. If, if I'm not here next Sunday, I told Brian, I said, you got a job. I said, so if I'm not in, you'll be working with Chris. Uh, wait, give me, I'll be taking a day off. So, wait, Ray's not here. Woo yeah. So that's, uh, that, that's, my, but you know, this is what guys do all the time. They go across the country and they get cars and they, and they bring stuff back all over the place. And uh, yeah, men that are out of their minds. Yes. You know, we were at a, a wedding, a, good friends of mine on um, uh, Friday night. Actually, it was my good friend Tom it was his son's wedding but we got to see the group of all the guys that you know all of us that grew up we were teenagers together that uh, must have been fun we get together yeah, it is but Tom was telling me he goes ah now Tom's got a bunch of cars he does mm -hmm. a lot of Corvettes and a lot of stuff and and Tom is the owner of the 55 Nomad that that reposes in my driveway right now yeah well the... <laughs> not the original owner in our lifetime he's the original owner. i think he bought it in 72. i know and i don't know why you don't roll it back to him because well, he told me he says listen i just bought another car i bought a 55 chevy i'm like you did and it was a white one now there's been one circulating around here in long island it's been for sale and it was a gasser and i said is it is it local and i thought that he goes no 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 it was from upstate mm -hmm. i said really i said okay so it's not this one and he says yeah you know it's got a nine inch in it four nine inch rear no engine tranny and he says um he made the deal with the guy over the phone, sight unseen. He hasn't seen the car. And he goes in and delivering it, you know, this weekend. Wow. So, wow. So I want to wow. get over and see that thing. Because uh, Take the other nomad with you. So this stuff happens all the time where cars are bought and sold and transported. It goes on every single day. I know. Right? It's, yes. It's just, it, to me, it, it ruins the appeal when I have to go across country to go get it and drag it back. I'm sorry. You know what? That's where you're wrong. That's For me, it ruined you. Okay. Okay. I, I, I don't because mind taking a couple of brick bats. That's where the story comes in. So the, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm telling you. You know, I'm going stories I'd much rather avoid. I'm going with my buddy Chris and, and our Chris, our good friend Mike from, from uh, the shop, from the body shop. Yeah. Um, and, you know, even though. I know the two of them. I'm the common denominator between the three of us. Correct. Uh, I think Chris and Mike had met maybe once or twice. They're going to get along fine. It, it's, oh, I'm sure. And and everybody's kind of the same. We're all the same mind. So it's going to be the story of the trip. You know, it's like we're going to have this road trip now that like the ones that, that we've talked about in the past that, that we've right. all done. Mm -hmm. And then that's kind of what it's all about. It's like, you know, you can go out at night and spend time with your friends in a bar and maybe get a story out of it. Well, right. We'll some stories out of this for sure. <laughs> so I'm sure I'm, I'm looking forward to them. Let, let's put it that way. That I'm, I'm looking forward to them as, as I'm, as I'm not driving in a truck, as I'm not sleeping in a hotel room, as I'm not loading up I, major yeah. pieces of, of, of metal. So, you know what? <laughs> I'm bringing cash with me because I'm hoping this guy's going to have other stuff that I that I may want to purchase myself. And I'll bring back some parts for myself. But if you if you have taken a road trip or want to take a road trip, give us a call at 516-572-7440 and tell us about it. We'll talk. And, I'll, you and I'll do my best to try and talk you out of it. Exactly. But <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll encourage you. I will encourage you. And that's why, you know, when uh, when I asked Mike if he wanted to come, uh, let's face it, all of us. Well, not all, all of us, but Mike and I, especially, we're, we're kind right. of, we're not, we don't really go out. We're not really outgoing. We don't do a lot of extra stuff. Like You're not outgoing? Oh, no. <laughs> like some of my other friends are. Wait a minute. I stick close to home pretty much. Have we met? <laughs> I stick close to, yeah, well, have we really met, I guess, is the question. <laughs> I stick close to home. Uh, you know, I'll do things. No, that you do. Yeah. That you I, do. Yeah, you know, I like being back home. I like being in my chair at night. That's how it is. Exactly. Exactly. That's why this isn't a national show. Well, if that was what it took, I don't know. No, <laughs> no one gave you the notes. I, I didn't know that. But, you know, the, but, but Mike is kind of the same way. And and when he agreed to come, I said, "Wow, that's you know that's really cool." Yeah. Um, because now we have now we have something to talk about. So mm -hmm. we also have something to talk about because. We have a caller. So we'll go to the phones and say, hi, caller, you're on with the motor mouths. 
Hey, Ray, Chris, it's Glenn. What's happening, Glenn? <laughs> hey, Glenn. I haven't spoke to you in a bit. I know. <laughs> but trying to listen here and there, and actually on my, you know, my radio in the garage here, it's like staticky. But you know, I got the internet, figured that part out. So you know, I'm working on my car. I got to say this, and, and got- the the thing that's sad about that is you live in Freeport. I mean, Freeport is a sto- is <laughs> seven miles from the station, and, he and gets- you're getting static. I know when I drive through Freeport, the station gives me this wonky signal. It's like, yeah, you'll probably have better reception on your road trip. Yeah, <laughs> you know, dialing in local stations, but you know, you got the internet here and there. Even that sometimes doesn't work. But yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm trying to get some stuff done, and uh, figured I'd just call quick. What are you doing? And so I'm putting, finally putting in these A arms, the upper and lower QA one. Oh. Tubular A arms I have. Nice. On your Camaro, right? You have a yeah that a... we're sitting in the trunk for however long. It's uh-huh. what happened. Right. Sure. So I put I put the one side together on the passenger side, mm-hmm. and the castle nut on top of the, in other words, the lower ball joint. Mm-hmm. What I looked at, I said, all right, let me put this put the nut on, and it says, wow, it goes right past where the cotter pin would. You know, keep the, the nut once you torque it down. Yeah, yeah. And I says, that doesn't seem right. Uh-huh. So I review. Now, the, these parts are, I bought like two years ago. Yeah. Typical, right? You know, I right. should have put them in right away. Anyway, uh-huh. I re- reference this. So I got the right ones. They fit uh-huh. right in. And they say on their website to put a washer there if that happens. I read through this morning as I was getting ready. I said, that doesn't make sense to me. The washer <laughs> under the nut. Under the nut, yeah. Now, wouldn't that affect, or could that affect, in other words, you have to torque everything well, down. that's going to bring the nut closer to where the taper is, where that, where the, uh, where the cotter pin goes. Correct. Now, it, well, in other words, no, the taper on the spindle will be the same. In other words, right. that's seated where it is. But, yeah, but I'm thinking, is that really... Should that be so? I don't know why you do that. The nut, the nut does thread on to the taper of the of the ball joint, correct? Um, oh, just looking to get my glasses. I poked my eye out. <laughs> um, looking at this, no, it. Let me look at the one that's not in the car yet. It's yeah, just, that is kind of odd when the castle nut goes past the hole in the threaded. Stud. Well, the, the yeah, ball now, joints are sometimes tapered, so it gives you like a lead in, it, and then it's, it grabs and you and you run it up. Indeed, that's what it is. So, th- so okay. now what I had done because the OEM ones. In fact, I think this is the last time I you, you had helped me when we were at North Shore Tire. We oh put God, these, these springs in all them years back. That's a long time. ago. That's in the eighties. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, no, I think it was maybe late eight because um could be late eighties. Yeah. Glenn, how long have you owned this Camaro? Mustangs and whatever and every, right. Every car, every car got Kelly tires. Right, that's right. <laughs> At the time, Kelly's a good brand. How long have you owned the car, Glenn? Oh, this car I've had since eighty nine. Oh, yeah. Long so, time. so what I'm looking to do is basically replace the stock stamped OEM with all the the better goodies and. Huh. A good portion of it probably was never touched, meaning mm-hmm. potentially like original the the bushings and the, yeah. the lower a arms for sure. I think I did the top ones, right? But but that it just I look at this and say, wow, it it does go past, and I says, well, maybe I have to then use the they gave you all the hardware, the washers and so forth, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna I'll put it back on again and put the washer in, which I did now. I reassembled everything, but nothing's tight. I would I would do that and I would run it up and and tighten it and see and make that judgment call as long as you're firmly into the threads on the on the ball joint and you oh, can indeed and you yeah. can put the cotter pin in I don't see any problem with that. Yeah, so mm-hmm. it's just yeah you know, from what I was stock like I just fought the other side to get everything apart it's just filled with grunge and grime. Yeah, yeah. And I I pulled out the old cotter pins and said let me rip them out. Mm-hmm. Um and that's always it's just a pain. Right. <laughs> I got them yeah. out. Um, and I said, all right, well, I know what I'm going to do is compare the height of the actual, you know, the ball joint itself, you know, the new ones to the old ones and see. it's So based on what I have, I have the correct part. Um, and nothing's getting, you know, I can't return anything. Right. And 
I says, well, I says, just kind of concerned about that torque in the end. Okay. Um, I want it to ride nice. I don't want to have any noise you, or clunks. Glenn, I'll tell you, you're going to need a, a – now, did, let me ask you, because I didn't use I, – I, I used QA1 shocks, but I used Global West control arms. And, and, and I remember you had said that. You got the Global stuff in, in the GTO. Yeah. Now, they're called, they're called a negative G – it's a negative G suspension. I mean, what they did is they changed the camber rates through the control arms yes. to keep the car flat. And I tell you, the car is literally 90 degree turns, but you need to use a different set of alignment specs. So if you well, have that's, um, on the, the back page here, um, okay. All yeah, right. I have it right here. So I have, they say you got to go to your local shop and then give them this. And it, you, it has all the camber caster, Crosscaster and tow. If you don't have a guy, I got a guy for you because you need someone who's not going to go in and look up 69 Camaro and use the stock mm -hmm. specs. Yeah. And I'll tell you this, I will guarantee you, as long as your tires are up to it, you're going to feel like you're in a new car. Well, that the tires I had done some time ago, mm -hmm. and I went with, I got those aftermarket rims. They look nice, right. U.S. mags with yeah, yeah. Um, the the Nito what five fifty five. That's what I have on the back of my car. Yeah, the Nito. Yeah. yeah. So I'm expecting oh a a, a very good driver. You, is what listen, I want. You know what? It. You got to come out to the Master Grill with us on Monday night in Massapequa. We're gonna go this this Monday again. There's a there's a we cruise out there. It's a cool bunch of guys. You should check mm -hmm. that out. I would love to be there in this, but now. <laughs> I'm knee deep in this. I have to finish this project, obviously. Well, you got one side done. Come on, you only got one <laughs> control arms to go. No. The, the, and the other side's out. It's apart, and oh. I'm going to clean it up a little bit. So sure. no, the springs, I popped them right out. They, I just stood clear, and you know, once I got the, I had the jack under there, obviously. I said, well, let me just go over here in case something does fly. It's going to go that way, not towards me. Are you right? right. Using the same springs? No, I went with okay. the entire QA1. Oh, good. Um, they're pro coil package. Okay. It, it looks really nice. Good. And it's all fully adjustable, too, so I can dial in the ride height. Right, right, yeah. Good. That's, that's, I want to basically have the car level, and then in the back I had done the, um, I put in the, the Hotchkiss lowering. It's like an inch and a half, give or take, but it's a little heavier leaf spring, so it's all OEM from like the stock pickup points. Right, right, right. But now now it's all new bushings and shocks. Or sure. it will be all the way around. Right. Yeah, you did so. the right thing. You did the rest of the thing on the suspension. You're going to love it. It's going to be uh right. Well, I was just talking about on Thursday night, I don't want to change the profile of my front suspension. I think cuz I'm it's just let me put it this way. When you I've had guys at cruise nights, I tell them push on the car. I don't want to touch the paint. All right. You know what? Push on the radio <laughs> support. With everything you got and the car doesn't move. And that's why it makes 90 degree turns. But I'm thinking, you know, there's harsh, there's bumps and transitions where I pay for that. So right. I would change it from original cushy OEM. Yeah. Ride. I was thinking about maybe going to a coilover. I might do that. I may well, take the springs out and go to a coilover, see how that works. What, that's what this is. It's, um, okay. I'll, I'll send you a picture or two. All and right. uh, anyway, just figuring going to say what's up. And, you know, the, this whole, when you get something that kind of like, not to say stumps you. It's like, wait a second. Right, right. And then you think. In, then well, in like, the meantime, oh, Glenn, Glenn, you know what? Just hammer the hammer the cotter pin down so it meets the castle nut. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Bend it down. Do a hole. Then, right? Just drill some holes. Yeah, there you go. That's all. <laughs> Problem solved. There you go. Uh, yes. You know what, yeah, Glenn? But, Send me the pictures and, and get in touch with offline. I'd like to talk to you about that a little more. Cause it's, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. i always been thinking, so I got to call. And I listen on and off. And I saw it. But today I'm actually working on the call radio on nice is, well now i got a call <laughs> right right all right well yeah right, keep, keep me in touch on that all right we'll talk Be okay well. glad thanks, thanks glenn all, all right, right. so long all right that's good old glenn i yeah i know him for a long time that's uh great i'm glad to see he's, he's fine you know now he's he's doing his car like in stages I mean, sometimes it's like years in between the stages. I understand. I do what you can do when you can do it. You know, he obviously bought those parts years ago. We've all done that. And they sat sure. there. It's like, okay, now it's time. Years. I did that with my car, too. You know, it's like, okay, a couple of years later now. And now maybe I would have bought different parts in some cases. But mm -hmm. do you use the stuff you already paid for or do you spend more money? It's it's everybody's 
conundrum, if you will. No, it's true. And, and you're absolutely right. There's parts sitting in the garage that I bought for the Chrysler. I still haven't gotten a chance to put them on yet. Because a lot of times the parts are not complete, like right. the like for the, the, the trunk, the automatic trunk opener that I still need the canister for. I just haven't looked for it. Mine it's works. just one of those things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, mine works. I have that big red button in the glove box. I never yeah, I know. Punk. Yep. Wait a minute! What glove box? You don't have a glove box. It's all right. It's a cigarette <laughs> box. You could hold like yeah. yeah. Actually, it holds. It holds a red button. That's it. I could put a pair of gloves in there if I stood them on stood this. Stood them on. <laughs> <laughs> folded them. Hey, you know, sometimes you got to get. I gave up the glove box for AC. Let me right. tell you what else I didn't give up though. Uh, the weather, the beautiful weather today, which our WHBC weather forecast is powered by Pantano's Gourmet, with locations in Hewlett and Uniondale. And today's forecast is, it's kind of nice. It's in the 50s. We're 56 right now, partly uh, partly cloudy, uh, which is, means partly sunny, too. No chance of rain right now. Zero precipitation. It will be 50s through the day. Zero what? Yeah. Per- zero zero per- 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 uh, Pittsburghitation. I don't know. It'll be in the 40s tonight. Nice. So that's good. We'll be, uh, and, and right. it's be nice for the next couple of days. So I'm hoping it weather holds for my road trip. And the, the here's here's something that's that's going on at this station. I have to tell you about. Right. If you're a fan of the music of Billy Joel, then listen yes. up. Right. Mm. WHPC welcomes Mike Del Judas to Mulcahy's and Wantor this Thanksgiving weekend. Listen all week to win your way in and get a bonus chance to win right now by clicking the win tickets button on the WHPC app, which you can download from whatever wow. Play Store you you play in. So go grab the app, open it, and enter to win right now. Mm. That said, do we That's have good. an yes. hour? Yes. Taking a look at the uh, WHPC uh, weather window here in the Nutmeg State, which no one cares about, unless you're going to come up and look at trees. Trees are looking pretty good right now, but you got about 20 minutes before all the leaves go flying off. them. But anyway, that notwithstanding, the Motormouth Radio Honor Group of the Hour today. If you made a dumb comment about someone else's car, did you <laughs> ever step show? up? Did you, <laughs> did you ever step up to a vehicle at a car show or in a random driveway and just comment on something about that car? Just like pops out of your mouth. Absolutely no filter. Did you ever find that one time when the comment just slipped out for everyone to hear, slipped right into your shot? You know, comments like uh, you restored a four door. Uh, those are the worst wheels I've ever seen. Uh, What's with the fake cloth carriage roof and curb feelers? Uh, uh, How about this one? Can you see anything over that pro stock hood scoop? And of course, my favorite, my favorite is why did you paint it red? (laughs) So if a vehicle got you, got you so emotionally charged that you had to blurt out some demeaning comment, then you are part of the motor mouth radio on a group. There you go. Precipitation. (laughs) <laughs> phenolic, phenolic, phenolic. phenolic. Yes. So, yeah. With all that said, we'll be back. I want to tell you about a, a, a model show that's coming up that you Ooh. want to know about. And I want to talk about a regulator. So, yes. All right. So we'll Looking be back to with more Motor Mouth Radio right here with Ray Guarino and Chris Switzer on uh, 90.3 WHPC. Keep it where you got it. Uh, Spike, cue up some carbon. Yes. We'll be back with answers to your car questions. Give us a call at 516-572-7440. Oh, I should have said the motor mouth thing. This show on 90.3 WHPC is brought to you by Car Star Celebrity Chase Collision with two locations in Limbrook and Oceanside who remind you that New York State law says you always have the right to choose which shop will fix your car. Car Star Celebrity Chase Collision offers a full range of services, 24-hour towing between Montauk and Manhattan, shuttle service, and they can help you with a rental car arrangement if needed. All repairs include the Car Star Lifetime Nationwide Warranty, ensuring that the experts at Celebrity Chase Collision are always on your side. Y si, hablamos español. More information is available at 516-593-0920 or online at CelebrityChaseCollision.com. You're listening to the Motor Mouth. Hey, Ray and Chris.
Chris. Did you guys read my mind? Okay, I appreciate you having me on. Wow, you guys finally figured it out. Vote him out. This is great. No more foolishness. I miss my puzzles. You're a funny guy. I've been waiting for Sunday just to ask you guys this question. Our trained staff of two will help. Well, good afternoon, guys. I need a little advice. All right, so you got me to call in. All right. I don't know everything. You know, you guys are mechanics. You guys have a great show. Thank you very much. I come with a tale of woe and a warning for the younger guys. Chris is doing jumping jacks. He's getting ready. Ray is right behind me. Every time I get off the air, I think, vote him out. Oh, boy, they're never going to ask me back after that <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, this is a collect call. How are you? Quite frankly, there are better things to do with your time. <laughs> oh, I, I, I probably called the wrong number. I was trying to get a hold of Ray. And I wake up screaming. So I'm very happy to listen to your good advice. Yeah, I want to know what the is wrong with my car. You know, break it down for us car guys. All right. All right. See you next weekend. Vote him out. I know you guys usually speak Guido. Right. And now you're talking Pinsel and Yiddish. And this morning I happened to listen to the rabbi on ah. your station. So it's all, you know, I guess today's Yiddish day. Right. <laughs> there are answers, sometimes correct ones. And we may have them. Radio 90.3 FM WHPC. Vote out. Hey, you, get over here. Every Sunday, 12 to 1, you are going to tune in to hear the motor mouths, my friends Ray Guarino and Chris Switzer. 90.3 FM WHPC. You might learn something. You might learn how to play a classy horn like that if you listen. Ah. I think we should have this music all the time. <laughs> this is every. This should be our new open. We should just bed this music and just do the show over, right? We should just like. <laughs> <laughs> be like That'd be great. I have to bring in pies. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody did it like Spike Jones. Let me That's tell you, sure. not Quincy Jones, not uh, Fred Jones, not. <laughs> <anything>. <laughs> no, that's for sure. Yeah. Anyway, you're back with Motormouth Radio. Ray Guarino, Chris Switzer. We're here. Five one six five seven two seven four four zero. Give us a call. Tell us about your stuff. You know, uh, the model show can wait for a few minutes. That's going to happen in a couple of, of months. So I got time to talk about that too. Okay. But well, the, you know. Let me squeak something in on you. Remember last week I told you I changed the, um, I had the PL300 code on the cruise and I changed the coil pack and the plug. Yes. And you said you solved the problem, right? Immedi- and I noticed immediately, like, this car is getting better gas mileage now. Oh, yeah. I believe it. I went up at least, that car was like in the mid 20s, you know, 25, 26. I drove, we, we uh, I looked at the instantaneous the other day, it was 31. Now I'm that car is getting like four miles to the gallon better. So on Thursday, after you had left, and we got to the real subjects, uh, Brian <laughs> and I were talking about this, and he said, "Oh yeah, he had the same thing with his daughter's car." And he says, right. "You know, we kind of came to the joint conclusion that maybe as part of service for a vehicle, you should change the coils and plugs like every seven, eighty thousand, or hundred thousand miles." Really. And well, because it's not called for. The no, it's not are. called for. But you know that that is something that I do as well. I go, why would you change one coil? Change them all. Well, They're well, all going to go. Right, right. But I'm saying, like, not maybe not even when there's a failure. We no. were thinking, like, maybe at eighty or a hundred thousand. Yeah. Let's you want. Let's buy a coil pack and some plugs and throw. We're going to do the plugs anyway. Let me do the coil. And I, yeah. we were onto something. You know, that was never in the lexicon before. I never heard anybody's talk about that i am certainly going to do it on the mazda the Mazda's going to we, we're not coming up to 100,000 miles but we're certainly in the 90,000 mile range and yeah i'm going to be marketing myself for a set of coil packs for that car right i did it on the on the compass when i had that jeep compass i did all full coil packs just because the car reached 100,000 miles i said you know what drop them in there what's the big deal i okay. think they were i think all four of them came out to i bought them from a dealer uh i think uh-huh. they were about 200 bucks for all four of them okay and I thought it's that's that's a tow home. And that's I went what that to, is. Yeah, I went to I bought the coils and plugs through Amazon for the cruise, and I got a name brand, and I was like, it was one hundred sixteen bucks. Mm-hmm. So yeah. so there you go. No, I totally agree. And yeah, I you have talked me into getting the name brand because there were times I tried to cheap out 
and it just didn't work. Well, and this is a name brand. Yeah. Yeah. And this is where I lead into the regulator story. Thank you for, for giving me okay. that, that great walk in. Um, I went and I, I think I told you I had a regulator on the Chrysler that was cooking the battery. Yes. It would swing all the way. The, the gauge on the dash would swing all the way to charge. I'm like, right. that's not good. Right. And literally, when you pop the hood after you shut the car, if you heard the battery boiling, it was bubbling. Sure, it was in your stomach. <laughs> that's what's happening now. Mine's getting, you know, I didn't really eat this morning. I was I like, didn't either. Late. there's no one home. So I slept late. The cat didn't get me up. I had coffee. <laughs> like, you like, had no one there. So no one there to cook for you. I know. So I, I need lunch. I'm, I'm getting a little hungry right now. <laughs> So, yeah, so um, I actually uh, checked it all out and found out the regulator was bad. And I swapped it out with a cheap regulator uh. that was solid state. I thought, you know what? I'll get this $20 solid state regulator mm-hmm. and I'll drop it in there and I'll see what happens. What so you- I. I Let drop it. Because you keep saying solid state like that's the bad solid. thing. Well, that's the, you know, it's the, here's the thing. And this is my theory. <laughs> this thing. is what I want to, I want to bring up to you. Yeah. yeah I put the solid state uh, regulator. In there. Uh-huh. It runs fine for about a week. Yeah. Then next thing you know, I get in the car recently. I got in the car, started it up. And I noticed that it, I looked down, I looked right at the gauge. It wasn't moving. It was staying in the middle. Yeah. And then I noticed that it was dipping a little bit. It mm-hmm. was staying on the discharge side, but a very little bit. So I start putting a load on the alternator, I turn the lights on, turn the radio on, put the ant- antenna up, go through the whole thing. Now it's really swinging. Mm-hmm. So I go and test it and it's, it's only putting out at the battery 12.15 volts. That's too low. Yeah. Right. You should so, be around that point. You should be up I'm almost around a 13, six or so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And, and I, I totally agree. Where where the other regulator was putting out a steady like sixteen. 16. Well, that's that's <laughs> unregulated voltage. Right. Oh, that's bulb popping voltage. That was it. Oh yeah, the headlights were the brightest I ever saw them. It's pristine. Yeah, it was. It was. It was definitely definitely a, a fifty eight fury. Right. So so now I said, you know what? Let me check it again. Of course, I go through the setup again. Find that the regulator's bad. I'm like, ah, oh, let me just go get a real regulator. Okay. So I bought an older style, original coil type with the regulator. You would find a 19- mechanical one. Yeah, a mechanical one. Yes. I dropped that in there. The darn thing is fine. Oh, wow. OK. Hey, and it only cost me five bucks more on eBay than it was new old stock. But yeah, there's good. There's bad. There's all sorts of stuff. Let's uh, let's, let's go to the phones and go to the fun and say hi. You're on the motor mouths. Hey guys, good afternoon. How's the uh, weather in New York today? It's a nice, beautiful, the way I like it, like 52 degrees, but it feels a little colder. Oh yeah, well we we were 52 when I woke up at about 7 and now we're like 82. Right. Oh, it's about it's about the same here in the nutmeg state, Skip, but it, but no one cares. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Uh quickly on the uh, QA1 coilovers. Yeah. I have them in the uh, 57 Nomad. Okay. I absolutely love them. They're phenomenal. Uh, I had the Carrera coilovers that were in it originally, but they had never been adjusted properly, and they bottomed out, and they Ooh. broke the mount, everything else. They were just a disaster. Yeah, not- so when we pulled them out, uh, we replaced them with the QA1 coilovers. I got them through JEGS, and what a difference in the front suspension. I've got such a... a a beautiful ride in the front end of the car now where it was hard and, and just terrible before it's, it rides like a regular car. Now it rides the way it should. Oh, it's good to know. I highly mean, recommend them. No, highly with the recommend. QA1, that's a heavy car with a big block. So yeah, with the QA one, I mean, you're at the top of the chain. You, you're at the premium cost point too, with the QA one, right. but there's others. There's a company, a few of my friends have used it and damn, it usually pops right into my head. And now I can't think of it. Um, uh, uh, they, they said they've had a lot of good luck with. I can't think. And I was just saying that I remember hearing something in that vein also, but I yeah. have a brain fart on it. Yeah, I'll remember on the way home. I'll, I'll yeah, of course. You know, in about 15 <laughs> minutes, I'll get it. Sure. <laughs> that's that's the way the brain works these days. Yep. On another quick update with the uh, motor for the Nomad, do you remember the issues with the 454? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know where I left off with it, what I told you, whatever, but the, just a quick encapsulation. The... Uh, 
Edelbrock carburetor had been dumping fuel. Uh-huh. It uh, kept washing the cylinders, and it totally um, destroyed the motor. What happened was it took the cross hatching out of the cylinders, Ooh. plus it put uh, horizontal grooves in the uh, cylinder walls. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, the rod bearings were wasted. They mm. were gone. Uh, the mains were good. The cam was good. Everything else was good. So the motor has been, uh, totally machined. It's been 30 over. Uh, so now it's a uh, 460. Uh, the hardest part was finding pistons for it because that's the ZZ 454 crate motor and they're particular to that engine. And they had a they, the guy said he found like the last set. I don't know where he looked, where he right. found them, but that was the maybe that's so he could charge more. I don't know. But uh, the uh, rotating assembly is all back together. It's going back together now. On Monday, it should be finished up. The intake was on it, and uh, it's coming out great. And they keep promising me what a beautiful bulletproof motor it's going to be. And this time around, I'm going with what the GM High Performance uh, package recommended, and that would be a Holly 770 CFM carburetor. Uh, that seems to be the bottom line decision so far. And the, the, the difference is whether it's going to be a, a Dominator, a Brawler, or the regular Holly, and what's available and where the pricing lies and, heard, and what have you. Heard a lot of good things about the Brawler, but I got to say, I really got to say, this is the car that just doesn't want to be finished being restored. Now, you're exactly right with that, and I had a major discussion with the guy, Mike, yesterday who had the car up on Long Island for a year yeah. working out all the bugs and making it to where it was a totally restored running car. And now here I am on that merry-go-round again, right. and I've been assured again this time that this <laughs> is going worry. to take care of everything. Wait, wait, Skip, is this the, the, Skip, uh, is, Skip totally is this the Purple Nomad? Is this, this is the Purple Nomad? Yes. That's yes. the one. Yeah, you're right. This car does not want to be restored. It's, no, it's, yeah. I remember this car 20 years ago. This car <laughs> reminded me of Christine, but in reverse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. like, no, I don't exactly. want that motor. This car doesn't want to go. Yeah. And the thing was, if you remember originally, the 396 I had in it, when it was in the body shop, they kept running it without oil pressure, and they they uh, spun two main bearings yeah. on me. So when I got the car home, it sat for a year, depending. I was trying to decide what to do with it. I was going to sell it at one point, and I said, no, I can't do that. I'm too much into it. So that's when I went <laughs> with the ZZ 454 oh, crate motor, wow. thinking this is going to solve all my problems, yeah. all my issues. I'll never have to worry about a motor again. Yeah. Uh, and the reason this went into the shop was I, I changed from the uh, Turbo 400, which is a great performance transmission, but I wanted the overdrive, so I had a 700R4 built by a tranny guy with a heavy-duty converter and all. And in the process of getting all of that done, that's when I did a compression check on the motor and found the issues. And now I'm waiting for the reassembly and get it back on the road with the 700R4 and hopefully be able to drive it a lot more than I ever did and hopefully be able to well, enjoy it trouble-free, I hate to say. Well, yeah. I tell you what, I like all the choices. I'm with you on everything you've done. The only thing I think that, uh, that I'm a little, I, I wish you would have gone the next step is with the fuel injection. Because I think you, you know, would have you would have absolutely loved it. <laughs> now you see that's what I was going to do with this particular build when mm. I was having the motor redone. This shop is known for doing all the fuel injection oh. systems, along with they do all L LS motor conversions. That's yeah. their big deal. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I said to him was, knowing this was a carburetor issue, knowing how shy I am now with another carburetor for Christ's sake, and I've had them all my life. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of the fuel injection. I said, you know, I was going to do it up north if I had stayed up there because of the drivability and the no choke and all of that and starting and whatever. I said, came down here, figured out, oh, well, I never need it because, you know, I don't you don't need a choke down here practically. Right. So he says, you know what? I, I'm certified in these things. I do them all the time. He says, I'll tell you right now, it's usually a 50-50 deal. You either love them or you hate them. They either work great uh... or they work like crap. He says, yeah. I've had more problems and issues. He said, I would steer you away from it. I don't recommend it. I'll tell you what. I got I to gotta argue with that. I really do. Uh, we've talked about this, you know, uh, offline. We talked about fuel injection. I, I mean, yeah. I did mine. Yeah. If I could do it, 
you know, you don't have to be a rocket scientist, obviously. But now Holly came out with the Sniper 2. And some yeah. guys like Fitech, that's a great system also, smaller company, independent. But there were maybe uh, six to ten issues with the Sniper that people were f having re repeatedly. Holly now worked all of those out with the Sniper 2 and, and said, now we have the bulletproof bolt on, blah, blah, blah. So I'm, all the people who kind of worked it out. Now, I was lucky the stuff I bought was used, and I didn't have any of the problems. Well, I had one small problem, but none of the problems that were on the major top 10. So I think with this Sniper 2, uh, it's going to be a whole other ball game with them. It's it's going to be really. I have to ask him about that because he is he's all Holly certified. All that's where all the certifications are and everything. Right. And those are the units that he usually used, the sniper. And I think part of the problems were electronic, if I'm not it mistaken. It is. It is. I mean, we could get into this. We don't have time now. We're at the end yeah, of the show. No, because I understand. There's a lot of RFI issues, isn't? And most of it from what I've seen and learned was user error. Even the guy that had the stuff that I had put it on and hated it. Drove it yeah, 50 well, miles. Tom had the same issue on his car. And he had a specific issue that was done wrong that he solved. Right. And, you know, and, but the point is, I know that the guy that had the stuff that I have did, he made a lot of mistakes. And then he yeah. drove it 50 miles, didn't like it, took it off. You can't drive it 50 miles. You got to drive it a couple hundred. You got to lay down, you know, it's got to learn. Yeah, you have parameters to. Parameters and all, sure. So a lot of people do things not correctly and then bash the product so no, i understand so that, i'm just that, saying i'm here on the holly pro side because i've and i had problems with drivability in the beginning too i did but now i'm a couple hundred miles in maybe 500 miles in and i tell you something every time i take my car out it's just it's better it really is well you know? i figured too even going with the fuel injection and the 700 r4 i'm helping with my gas mileage i'm helping with drivability i'm i'm doing everything to upgrade and to get to the best possible scenario I can be. And I guess the reality is, and the truth of it is, like you guys know right now, I'd just be happy to have a yeah. turnkey car that I, I can just enjoy know, right now. I say this openly to everybody. I never use the words miles per gallon, because when you have a car like this. Oh, it's smiles per gallon. Smiles per mile is what I say. Yeah. But I will tell you this, I've noticed I'm using less gas. I can tell you, I'm using yeah. less gas between when I go out. I'm like, wow, the needle isn't moving like it used to. Maybe you saying that. So yeah. it is getting better miles, and so that's just you know, a nice thing. set up right, and they and they work right. That's what they're made to do. That's well, right. The, the computer is doing what you set the car, the carburetor. It's set. It's set until you change it again. The computer can constantly change it, like any right. modern car that we drive. Under so. all different circumstances, loads, and everything else. You know, this buddy that I have, this he's got a dual quad tunnel ram Chevelle. We're at a cruise night last week. And, it, you know, it was getting late. We were leaving. And it was like, eh, low 50s. It was getting cool. Right, so right. we start our cars together. And he says, uh, you know, wave goodbye. He says, I got to sit here for a while. I got to warm up. I'm like, yep. yeah, I don't. I put the car in gear, took off. And I said, I told my friend Kevin with me, I said, this is so great. Not even having to worry about a choke anymore. You know, well, that was the joy with uh, fuel injection in, in any, you know, daily driver or right. whatever. I remember even with my, my Berlinetta Camaro, I used to start it up in the middle of the winter in the, in, at the airport and turn the key, and I'm out of the parking lot before half the other people are even moving, you know. But uh, that's how I was anyway. But uh, it's all good. Right. All right, guys, listen, I know you're you going to get through yeah, the clock here pretty soon. I just wanted to give you a quick update, and I got another update probably for next week's show. I'm doing the Yell Camino at the same time. I'm all right. going, with, going with the big block and that and everything, all four-wheel disc brakes and everything. So Very I got good. two projects going here. All right, well, let's run, Skip, because we uh, we're going to get bit. Talk to you soon. All right, bye. Bye. Thank you, Skip. And we got to get out of here, too. Guess what? Next week we have Christian from, from – uh, the old mock modified Long Island Racing uh, nice. Free Express in the studio with us. Steve Kelly's in for Kim. What are we telling it's people good. waiting for me in the parking lot? Well, do I take Don't this? follow us home unless you got some fuel injection. <laughs> All right, thanks. Motormouth Radio out. Ray Guarino, Chris Switzer. We'll see you next week. 90.3 WHBC. See ya. See you, bye.